Well, friends, it appears that we're coming to the end of a long journey. We've made it to Module 7, and we will look at presenting a training plan. And I remind you again that statistics are human beings with the tears wiped off from a quote from Paul Broder. This lecture will provide insight into the following. We're going to provide you a brief overview of a 10-step training plan. Uh, we're going to look at and look at strategies for gaining the approval of management. We're, we've come to the end of a long journey, so this 10-step plan should pull everything together. And then if you, you can do the best job you want, but if you don't get the approval of the management, it's not going to work. The overview of the 10-step training plan is outlined as follows, and this is to get uh, buy-in from management, and to do so, you need to link the outcome from each of these analysis to a business need. Um, I will point out to you that though I'm providing you a 10-step plan, there, there could be an 8-step plan, there could be a 5-step, there could be a 20-step plan. This is just one approach to presenting a training plan and designing it. The first thing that I believe you need to do is issue definition. Define the issues that are related to a business need that the training will address. Again, if there is no need, why do you need the training? Just to be popular? Well, most of us grew up as nerds and weren't popular anyway, so I suggest that you look for a need. Need identification. And again, some organizations get trapped in delivering training because of popular or requested without regard to the business need. Once you define the issue and you then identify the need and you examine how widespread the need is, you, you have a very powerful foundation upon which to build your training plan. You need to determine how supervisors will be included in the planning and be involved in the assessment of training. So you have an issue definition. What is the issue? How do, what is the need found within that issue? And how are you going to involve supervisors? You need to establish uh, performance standards to find the minimal level of acceptable performance required for the training. If you have a need, what is the minimal level of acceptable performance to address the need? Uh, trainee identifying who is going to be trained, what job classifications do they hold, how many people need the training, such questions as is it group training, individual training, is it mandatory or is it voluntary? All of those things need to be looked at. You need to establish the objectives and the evaluation criteria. You need to start thinking about this question. How will you know that the training is being and was successful? And, you know, you need to be able to do formative assessment, which is assessment going on during the training, and you need to do summative assessment, which is the final assessment of whether or not the training was effective. What is the cost of the training? Uh, what are the costs to assess the need for training? Design the training. Develop learner and instructional materials. Present the training and evaluate the training. Uh, business is going to want to know how much does it cost. And uh, the, the business annals are full of those who went off and did things and found out the cost was just overwhelming. It may be that the problem costs less than the training to correct it cost. Uh, how are you going to develop the training program? Will the training program uh, present an existing program? Uh, will you use a, a package training? Will the training uh, utilize internal or external subject matter experts? How are you going to develop it? Uh, will the training be, when will it be delivered? Will employees train on the clock? All of those scheduling issues we discussed. And how are you going to do your summative evaluation afterwards? That summative evaluation should include four levels at least, participant reaction, which is often left out, uh, the learning that occurred, job performance change, and, of course, the results of the training. Now, there are some strategies in the second part of this for gaining the approval of management. Uh, the manner in which a training plan is presented to management to gain approval depends on the decision-making process of each organization, and some ideas follow. I want to remind you that there is no one-size-fits-all with organizations. Every organization is different, and some organizations do things one way, some do it another, and you need to make the training plan uh, appropriate for the organization, and when you present that training plan to the organization, the plan needs to include those things that would be of interest to the organization. 
confirm the business need and the reason for the needs assessment. Um, what What is the need again? And, and just confirm that with management. But this is the problem. This is the need. And we, did, we need a re needs assessment to help us identify what is actually going on. Describe the types of needs analysis conducted and summarize the data collected. Uh, if you just went out there and asked Bubba what was going on, Cooter may not be impressed with that. But uh, Bubba and Cooter both may be impressed with a very detailed approach such as those that we have discussed throughout this course. Provide opportunity for open discussion regarding the organization's commitment to the training. Now, what I mean by this is an honest, straightforward discussion with the management as to their level of commitment to the training, what they expect for it, from it, and, and uh, what, what you're expected to deliver. Uh, if they're not committed, go home. And, and if they are committed, then they need to very clearly lay out for you what the expectations for your training are. And then make joint decisions on training recommendations. Uh, uh, the the uh, laws of the Medes and the Persians, the king made the decision, and then uh, he couldn't change it because others wouldn't let him. Well, a trainer is not the king. A trainer is one of a team, and you build a team and you make joint decisions. Uh, the old saying, the customer's always right, is not correct when it comes to training. The, the voice of the customer should be heard. You may have to make a decision as to whether or not you can meet their need. Yes or no, if you can't meet their need, then, then let them get someone who can. But they need to be involved in the decision-making process, and they need to be informed at all times. And this not only includes the management, but sometimes it includes the workers. Uh, one of the fundamental axioms of andragogy, where andragogy is the education of adults, is that adults respond well to inclusion in the decision-making process. And we all know that if we think something's our idea, we'll fight for it. And if we think something is your idea, we're not going to do much to make it come to pass. Uh, how did we do in this last little summative lecture? We provided you an overview of a 10-step training plan. Again, I remind you there are many ways to develop a training plan. Ten steps is just one model, but I hope that it guides you. Your plan may have eight steps. It may have 12 steps. It may have four steps, and it may be steps right out the door. It may be steps to belonging to the organization that you work for. So we provided an overview of a 10-step training plan. We also discussed strategies for gaining the approval of management. Again, if management is not committed, you're spinning your wheels. If management is committed, then it's your job to make certain that the training occurs and accomplishes what management needs to happen, or at least to give it your best effort. Um, if, you can't, if you can't win, then die trying. Do the best that you can. Again, I, I want to thank you for your support. You've been very faithful through this entire series of videos um, your patronage keeps my family fed, and just in closing, on behalf of my wife, on behalf of my four children, on behalf of my seven grandchildren, on behalf of the two lambs that we're bottle feeding right now who are enjoying life, I want to thank you for your support. Uh, again, live long and prosper. That's from the last generation. Have a great day.